right, uh, we'll start the meeting 905. This is a special meeting of the Long Beach Building Commission to consider uh, permits at stop 28 and stop 29. Uh, permits, um, this will be the fourth meeting that we've talked about these permits. Uh, actually, I should, let me correct that. This will be the fourth meeting that we've talked about the drawings, the third meeting that we've talked about the permits. Uh, at the last meeting, the discussion was that we asked, in the end, in the, end the discussion was that we asked the owners slash engineers to uh, pull the stone back away from the WTA steel sheet piling wall. And uh, they have done that. The uh, drawings now show the stone at or behind, pardon me, the uh, 584, which is the National Ordinary High Watermark that we received from the Army Corps of Engineers. Bob, I don't remember when that was. I think it was last week. Right. Who mm -hmm. has that letter? Uh, when that, uh, everybody should have a copy of it, but when that came through, I can, I can come down and take a look at it. It's down here. I just have to figure out how to change screens. Everybody should have a copy of the drawings. Joe, I know you have a large copy. Um, if you want to uh, go through the drawings, we can certainly do that now. Uh, does everybody have a copy of them? Do you want to go through them? All right, Larry? Yeah. Larry? Yeah, go ahead, Joe. I don't know who's calling. Can I can I just read? The, I, I mentioned to you, I would just like to read one sentence from the Army Corps of Engineers letter. Because to me, it just, <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm a little uh, interested and I'm just, cu I'm curious what other people think about it. Is that okay? <laughs> Go ahead. All right. In the letter that the Army Corps of Engineers sent us, in the third paragraph, second sentence, it says, this determination has been conducted. So that tells me the reason for the determination has been conducted to identify the limits of the Corps' Clean Water Act and Rivers and Harbors Act jurisdiction for the town of Long Beach. I I just don't know exactly what, what that means and what they're trying to get across. Just leave my comment. Okay. Uh, now that letter, Joe, is the backup letter to the letter to the town is it should be up on everybody's screen right now. That's from the letter to the to right. Bob LeMay. Uh, and the letter to the town that was the cover of what you're talking about uh, should be, hold on. Can you guys see what I'm looking at here? Yeah, it looks like you need to click on the letter though. Okay, so, uh, what Joe's referring to is what's up now. And it says the Army Corps Ordinary High Water Mark Determination for Long Beach, Indiana. Yep. The actual cover letter that came with that is what should be you, you should be looking at now. Which, now we're, we're still looking at the uh, PDFs. Right. Looks, but, like, looks like they need to be clicked on. Okay. Hold on. Are you looking at the one now that says Department of the Army? It has a C left hand side. 
No, no, that didn't. At least on mine, that hasn't come up. It um, hasn't come up. I've got a copy of it. I mean, that's what I read from. Uh, well, <laughs> what you what you read from is the is was the information that was behind it. Does everybody see that, what I'm scrolling through right now? No, no, that's not sharing. What I what I read from Larry is a letter that stated October 23rd. I understand, I understand what you read from, but there's two parts to it, and I want everybody to understand what those parts are. All right, what do you see now, Bob? Yeah, there we go. Now it's come up. All right. October 23rd, 2020. Right, and it says yep. Army Corps Ordinary yep. High Watermark Determination yep. for Long Beach, Indiana. Got it. Okay. This is what Joe read from. No, it's not. What is the other section of this is the front letter, which I'll see if I can't bring it up. Yeah. This, Larry, this is not, okay, this is what I read from right now. Right. The letter you just does brought up. Does everybody see this where it says Department of the Army and it has Department of Defense yep. deal up on the corner? Good. That's, that's the cover letter that came with the information. And that's the letter that I read from. If you scroll down, you'll see exactly what I read. Right. Right there where it says, the, the determination, I read the second sentence. Right, okay, so this letter came as the cover letter for the other information, which is this. Hopefully this will come up now. Yep, it's there, yep. And this explains what they did. This is their determination And this explains what they did, how they got to that point. That's the, they both came at the same time, but I just want everybody to understand which came first, the chicken or the egg. So the, the field work, so to say, is explained on the second and third page. And this is the determination letter. Right. Okay. Everybody understand that now? Yes. Okay. So in this letter, I'm assuming everybody's read it. They have determined that the ordinary high water mark is at 584 feet. Thank you. Everybody understand that? Yep. All right. Now I got to figure out how to get out of here. <laughs> if I screw this up, Bob, I may have to rejoin. I, I don't know. I think, it, is there a thing to stop screen sharing? <laughs> stop share. There we go. There you go. Yep, that did it. <clears throat> so, uh, the next thing is, you want me to share the drawings? Uh, or everybody, I guess if we can, that might be good. Since you're so good at it, why don't you? Yeah, okay. Uh, what are you going to do first, Larry? I'll, get, I'll bring the drawings up. Which one are you going to do first? I had them down here. Okay, so this is the Vortman drawing. Can you guys see that? It, it's not open. It's not open. God damn it. But uh, we're going to do Vortman first. I, I want to get my paperwork out. Uh, can you guys see this drawing? Not yet, no. Damn it. All right, hold on. And Larry, the drawing you're pulling up is the stuff we got from uh, November 4th, right? The last one? How about that? I've got it now. Yep, it's got there. It All right. 
So I'm going to zoom up on it. I don't, I don't know if you guys can do any of this zooming or not. So this is the uh, Long Beach property. You see my arrow here? Yes. So the, long, the town of Long Beach property goes from here over to here. The Vortman property goes from here to here. This is the existing conditions. Uh, the 584 mark, you'll see this blue line or blue highlighted area. They've pointed out the 584. Each one of these lines is one foot. So this shows, as I'm scrolling up, you'll see the house come in. So this, this, this is the existing. They don't show the rock that's down there existing. Right now, there's riprap all along the front of this, of the house. There's some riprap here. There are some tiebacks to the existing steel sheet piling, which are broken. Uh, the second page, now we're on the second page. So, this material, hopefully you're seeing what I'm moving my, that's larger rock. So if anybody's had a chance to go down there in the last week, you'll see that there has been a tremendous amount of what we call riprap, which is broken concrete. Some of the concrete slabs down there, there's one slab that's probably 20 foot square and a foot thick. Uh, which I, I, who knows where they came from, but they were obviously dumped there years ago. So right now, this area almost looks like this because of all this riprap that's down there. So the proposal is to take that riprap, move it away from these areas. This is where the slope is. Uh, it's it's actually a little more severe than what these topo lines show right now because of the uh, erosion that's happened. So that riprap would be pulled back. The slope would be cleaned up. That riprap would be put down as as you see on the last sheet. What's what they sometimes I think they call it mattress stone uh, or bedding stone. Please. Which I can right the next drawing. You see down here, down low, where it says eight inch mattress stone. That old concrete riprap would be put down there. And then this smaller stone would be put there. And then these larger stone, which is what we've all talked about as shot rock, or I've talked about as shot rock, uh, would be put. And then the head size stone is put in that in there to lock that stone in. If you only put one size stone, it has a tendency to want to wash out because there's nothing for it to lock together. It's just like sand. Sand is angular, so it locks together. Beach sand is bad because it's rolled, it's been rolled on each other on itself. And if you look under a microscope, it's round. Uh, but when sand is angular, it was the same thing with stone it locks together so it compacts, so to say. So if we go back up, the goal would be to, from this existing concrete uh, seawall, which was is part of the town of Long Beach property, over all the way through the town of Long Beach property, then onto the Vortman property would be to put, uh, uh, pardon me, on this, Town of Long Beach property it would be to put the the riprap that's there down, bury it down underneath this, put the larger stone, and then lock it in with the smaller stone. The same thing would hold true for in front of this deck and grade beam here, with the smaller stone locked in here. Some of these stone that are out in this area. 
uh, one piece in particular is so large, it's probably right about here. I'm not sure that they can move it without breaking it up. Um, so that is, that's kind of the, it in a nutshell on the Vortman property. Any questions? Uh, Larry, I've got a question, Joy. Sure, Joy. Um, what holds the, that large rock at the natural ordinary high water mark? Well, if you go down to, I'll scroll down again. The, the goal is to this fat, this black line here. Yeah. Is fabric that's laid underneath all of it. And the, the goal is to, as I mentioned about the sand locking together, this, uh -huh. is, this is just bigger pieces. You want to try to, if, if you've been down there, you've seen on what's called the Lupiani property, which is next to this property. There yeah. was a stone that was put there, but there weren't many smaller stones interlocked with that large stone. So the energy of the wave action moved those stone and they, they basically rolled down the hill. So to stop that, it doesn't do as much good to break the wave energy if your stone is kind of laying flat. So to stop that, you lock the stone with, you know, when I say headstone, it's about the size of your head. Um, what, what they list here, and I'll use my, he says, you know, three to five ton stone, or he part points to these pieces. And then he says one to two ton armor stone on top of that. And then he says eight inch mattress stone. Um, that's what I call headstone. And that is the reason for the different size stones, Joy, is to lock them together so that they don't move. Ideally, you don't want them to move when, the, when they're set, or pardon me, after they're set. Okay, thank you. I don't know if that answers your question or not. Yes, it does. Thank you. Um, so, uh, any other questions on the Vortman property? Yes. Go ahead. All right. First of all, I I don't uh, I don't like the characterization of a deck because that that it, that structure does not fit the definition that Long Beach has of a deck. So. That's number one, not a big deal. Number two, uh, I can understand what they, what they want to do in front of their home, but why, why do we want to put so much uh, revetment on the town property? You see, according to their, okay, thank you, Larry. According to their picture, if you go up just a hair, right. You see that, and and I've noticed in, in looking at the different prints that I have that the uh, 584 has changed, and I know I guess it's it continually changes, but in the document that we got on September 29th, uh, 584 is a lot lower, but whatever, I didn't realize it changes, but on this section where we're looking at our property, why why do we need all this revetment? Why can't, because if we look to the far right, where they talk about row, uh, and they have those little stones, proposed splash stones, right there, uh, going the other way, Larry. Right there. So if you look at those splash stones, and then you see this, little line here with a couple right angles, that is uh, Lyons' seawall. Or, well, it's actually on our property. But that, that's connected there, right in here, and further down. You're talking about right here where my area yeah, is? Yeah, I'm talking about that area there, yeah. right. That's and that, that's right. contiguous because Lyons has, you know, the part above it, and then this is all one line. And then we have that area that they're calling splash stone. For us, for Long Beach, bus stop 29, why can't we bring all that revetment down 
into this, this splash zone area and not overdo the revetment on our bus stop. This area where you're talking about where it says existing concrete here? No, what I'm talking, what I'm talking about, Larry, no, that, that existing concrete, I know what that is, that's Lyons' this property. I'm talking about in the middle, right here, where it says existing grade beam sheet <laughs> ME 1.02. Right, I know it's a whole bunch of revetment in there. I know it's on our property. I don't, I don't see the need, and we even juxt out just to make sure we're behind the, the, the 584, according to this diagram. I don't see the need for all of, I'm not an architect. I'm questioning the need for all of that revetment in front of our property, and why can't all that revetment be br brought down? Not all of it, and again, like I talked about one day, a Chevy versus a Cadillac, is all of that revetment necessary to protect the bus stop? Okay, so, and that, that's what I want to answer you here now. So this existing concrete, where this line is coming through here, this is the town's property. So this property that comes back here is protected by this concrete, then it's protected by a concrete wall, which has steel sheet piling underneath it. And then that same thing, this is steel, this is a concrete cap on top of, steel sheet piling and it comes back to this point Super. So right now if you if you were to walk down there what you see is this area is completely eroded away there's two or three trees that that have fallen that had not fallen uh as of two weeks ago so this area is completely eroded. These stairs now that used to come straight down here have fallen over to the right side. Yeah, the uh, so with this stone, what these two areas of stone are doing is they're filling the area. These steel, this concrete wall here is going back so that there will be no further erosion of the town's property up the hill. I okay. Are you? I and I un, I understand that, Larry. But my question is, we we want we want to have revetment there to protect the town property. But is it necessary to have all the revetment that's there? And why can't some of that revetment? It doesn't have to be that close to 584. Why can't it be moved back? And if we had to, we we would just we would even move. If, if you wanted to, we could even move the revetment where it has a splash area. We could move it back a little bit because by putting in all that stone, I mean, that could be limiting the beach area for the people and it could be a little bit closer back. And I don't see a need, especially you're juxting out for the 584, I don't know what that buys. And it just seems like we could be a little more prudent and put in less Revetment. Well, this this is not a beach area, and it has never been a beach area since 1964. This was an access where you climbed over, uh, lack of a better term, a valley area. The stairs historically have come down over this area, and it was a swampy area. But when the when the sand filled in in these areas let's go to here so when you look at this this shows you how steep this area is right now so this was never a beach area it hasn't been a beach area since 1964 nobody's used it what was used as a beach area is the area in front of the seal sheet piling which is here uh, and and like you like what you're saying, Larry, and I agree. You're talking historically. We don't have a clue what's going to happen, and we don't know what Mother Nature is going to do. And I just don't understand. And even even whatever, I'm even probably looking at cost too. Is it necessary to put in that much revetment? Is what my question is. And it just seems like it's it's overkill with the revetment, especially on our property. That's that's what my comment is. Okay. Uh, anybody else? 
Yeah, I guess my thought too is it, you know, the further, it, let's just assume this is north south and, and straight up is north. Right. So I have to, you know, and I, I want your opinion on this, but if they were to move that revetment further south, would it still be functional? Because it seems to me that the further south we move that revetment, the more chance we have of a beach reestablishing beyond that revetment when hopefully the lake level goes down. Well, I guess you'd have to know and understand what's happened here for the last 50 years or 60 years. This area, there's, there's steel sheet piling here that's shown by a dark dash line. From that steel sheet piling, there's dead men that go directly south and then they tie into, uh, or pardon me, those are tiebacks. And they tie into dead men, which are, in this case, on the, most of the town's property, they're triple sheets. In other words, they're three pieces of uh, the same type of steel used on the seawall that were driven back in these areas. And then there's rods that go to those. Some of them, they have smaller I-beams that go back to those. So that area has never been occupiable, so to say. So what, what someone did probably in, this, in the 70s or the early 80s is they came down and they dumped uh, the riprap down between all of this, and that riprap is there now. So in order for this to even be thought of as a beach, you would have to, number one, clean all that out of there. Um, and I, the, the beach has historically been, hold on, I lost this here. The beach has historically been out in this area. And when the water comes up to here, which it is now, this is the same wall that goes down in front of lions, breens, uh, slatteries, which is mullins, boys, and goes all the way down to this 20, uh, the 2948, the, the Vecchio property. This seawall goes all the way down in front of Dwayne Kelly's house. There has never been beach behind this seawall that was ever used because it's, it's, it's full of uh, support structure for the steel sheet piling. So I, I don't know that that would ever be the case where you would build a beach here. If you were to build a beach when the water was out, it would be done out in this area to the north of or water side of the steel sheet piling. Because the steel sheet piling is the primary uh, protection, the the, which is here. Then the stone is the secondary protection. This stone is to stop if, if the water continues to rise. And as we, like last year, we don't get shore ice protection this stone will, will, this steel sheet piling will be covered with sand and then this will become the primary protection. And then this stone would be the secondary protection to stop it from marching right up the hill. Larry, can you? We don't foresee that area behind the sheet piling ever filling with sand. You know, Bob, I can tell you just from being around there for all those years, there has been levels of sand where it has, it has, you know, with what they call accretion, there has been sand built up there, but it's never been a beach. It's, it's full of debris. It's, it's, it, there's structure in there. I mean, there's steel rod, there's I-beams, there's steel sheet piling, uh, you know, it would kind of be like walking through the roof structure of a of a dome stadium. That that's what you're in. You're in the actual structure of the the steel sheet piling walls. Pete, uh, Larry, on the on this diagram here, uh, 
it says the edge of the armor stone revetment up in the upper left, right where you're at. Uh, okay, go back a little bit. Yeah, edge of the armor stone revetment to be placed landward of this. That's not a physical barrier, is it? That's just determination no. of the stone. Yes, that's correct. Okay, can you go back to uh, the diagram you had up with uh, Joy with the filter sure. cross? Uh, go, go a little, there you go. That's good. Now, that, um, is, is that a, that's not a cap on that revetment, is it? What, what is this? It, look, it looks like a concrete cap. Is that a cap? This? No, that's actually sand. Okay. And that's what happens when the sand builds up. I mean, if you were to walk, if you would have walked down in front of Lupiani and, well, even, all these properties a month and a half ago, you wouldn't see 10% of what is exposed, the rock and riprap that's exposed now. And it's the same thing at stop 28. Um, you know, the, remember the pictures I showed you guys last time uh, that had all this, the, the road sections of pavement uh, down there. And even today, there's probably 40% more than that shown. Okay, can you scroll up again? Sure. Uh, oops. Yeah, right, right there. Now, they, you indicated that they plan on, on bringing the, the existing, some of the existing riprap back. Is that true? Yes, right now, if, if you were to walk down there and come down the Lion Sea Wall, you know, kind of where we all walk down here. Yeah, yeah. And you, you can get down here and you can walk around down here and you can get to about this point right here. And then this is all uh, unstable riprap, meaning it's, it's uh, chunks of road, chunks of sidewalks. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a very, very large section uh, that's got to be 20 by 20 over here. Just it's 12 inches thick. And that that most likely can't be moved by the equipment that would be down there. It would either have to be broken up or so then that material, you, you don't want that material because, I mean, back in the 70s, that was what they used. But now it'd be preferable to bury that material as a base for this stone. So what you have now is, and I can't point, but I can use, see where you got this big stone here, and then you got another smaller stone and another smaller stone, smaller stones, bigger stones. They lock together so that when a wave hits this big stone, it doesn't have a chance to roll around. And that's what happened with all the flat pieces that were put down there now, the riprap. They just, not that they move around all the time, but they do move. Uh, you know, you guys have seen it in the last few months up and down Lakeshore Drive. So the goal is, is to build a revetment so that this won't move and that, that for years to come, the stop will be protected, that these people's homes will be protected. And when the water recedes, that this would then be covered with sand, which it has been for years up until last year. Okay, so, so when we, we look at the, the area between the existing sheet pile wall and the edge of the armor stone revetment, is that area that now contains riprap and it's going to be pulled back? Yes, this area right in here, if you can see my mouse moving around. Right. right. That area right now has all kinds of crap in it. It's broken sections of road. There's some asphalt in there. There's some stuff that's just, you know, floated in from out in the lake. But that would be cleaned up because especially in this area, there has to be some repair done. You can see where the seawall is, is drawn, where it's out a little bit. Uh, 
my suggestion to the engineer and to Woodruff was, hey, I'd like to see another whaler put across here. And then w with tiebacks going back to uh, these existing dead men so that we don't have the, f in the future, we don't have this steel sheet piling wall on the town property laying out any further, laying out towards the beach. Right, but, but and, and I think that's a good idea. Uh, I, I just want to clarify that that area between the existing sheet pile wall and the proposed armor stone revetment, that's with rat, rip wrap that is currently in it, that's going to be dragged back to the 584 line? Yes. In this, in this, and I went down there yesterday with Bruce Woodruff. This, this is not, this can't be maintained. See where my, my. Yes. It, this is going to be straight. Okay. It's, it would be too difficult to, to bring this all the way out on this and then bring it back in here. Good. That, that was my next question. It's much easier to take the line. Let's say it starts here on the town's concrete uh, seawall here. It's much easier to take this line and bring it straight through here so that you, you know, you, you let's say you connect these two with the string, right? Almost where the 79 mark is. And then that would be, that would be this line. Okay. You know, you don't want that as a wandering line because it's too difficult to, to fabric. Okay. Now, well, a thing that's not shown on here, but future consideration or current consideration is if you can go back to the right on this diagram, uh, just a little bit close to the lion's property. Okay. What, 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 so it's made straight. Now, ultimately, we're going to want stairs to go down to this, uh, you know, and, and we can't have them landing on the beach any further than the high water mark. Is, are we, we will be able to um, make an access point for the stairs. Do we need different kind of stone? Do we need something? I don't know. You tell me. Part of the agreement would be that they, they meaning the private owners, not only pay for the stone here, but also pay to rebuild these stairs down to the beach. In doing that, there's there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, there's a patented system that is uh, what's called the helical pier. And you can take so when let's say all this is moved out of the way before it's reset, we would take and we would set helical piers in front of this concrete wall. We'd set another two here and probably two here and maybe even two here. And those piers would go down probably about 20 feet. So then the stone would be placed then whether you do it now or you most likely you'd wait till springtime, then you can come down and you can, you can build on top of those steel, the three inch pipe, uh, schedule 80 pipe piers. So you could fabricate the stairs to go down to the beach. If those stairs were to be broken away or you take them off in the winter time so that you don't have to worry about them floating down the beach and then you reset them rather than just what usually is done is you'll see people come and put four by fours on top of these rock and then first storm comes, boom, they're gone. So ideally we'd like to set at least three sets of two piers through the stone before the stones put placed actually so that they could be used as columns for new steps. And then the owners have agreed to rebuild the steps from SAP 29 all the way down. Okay, well, I, I'll defer to Bob on this. Uh, you, you know, we've, uh, we're, uh, the, the um, Shore Protection Ordinance says, basically implies you can't put 
uh, steps that land in the public trust. So we want to have something that is this, the, the last step of, before going on the beach is still on uh, uh, up, up, upland of the, the public trust line. Yep. So, is that right, Bob? Yeah, so the last step would have to be right at 584 feet. So you'd step down onto the beach. Yes. Is that no. doable, Larry? Yeah, the piers would allow you to put it at any level you wanted to, uh, Pete. It, it would just be a function of where that sand is in the springtime. I mean, I guess we would hope that the sand would come up and cover half of this stuff by next spring. You know, we don't know that that's going to happen, but... Well, just, just as long as we have the ability to terminate the, the steps at the point of the public trust and then people stand, because that's what we're holding um, residents to. Well, then I think we should put the last set of piers at the 584. Hmm. Yep. I leave, I leave that up to you how that should be done. And then, Larry, one other thing is, you know, we, we had them move the foot of the revetment back. Mm -hmm. Is that space between the foot of the revetment and the sheet piling wall then? You talked about how there's tieback, not tiebacks, but um, dead men and anchors to the dead men running through that space. With this smaller space, we're still going to have that same issue where there's all that superstructure there, right? Correct. We want to... We, we... I've requested that that be repaired as part of the project so that uh, because some of those were cut and some of them were just damaged just from age. Uh, so we would want to make sure that that this seawall here, hold on, my mouse is, this seawall, this really doesn't show, you guys have been all been down there. This seawall is actually laid out because the dead men or the tiebacks that are here and here and here are not connected anymore. So we would we would want to either put new rods out here with a whaler. Everybody know what a whaler is? That's the steel piece that goes horizontal with the sheeting. So we would put, matey. we would put a new whaler here and then tie that back to the existing dead men, which are back here. But I guess to answer your question, yes, Bob, that would stay, those, that structure would stay there. And is that a problem all the way across this revetment? Yes, there's structure all the way through here. So this beach may not ever be terribly pristine Unless sand reaccumulates and covers all that up. That's right. How, how, Larry, how high is the seawall compared to what's going to be below? Is there a good couple, two, three feet between the height of the seawall and the tiebacks and everything else? Right now, where this, see where my arrow is? Yeah, I see it. Right now, between my arrow and the sand here, there's actually water there. That's probably 18 inches. Uh, it, it, over in this spot, it might be two feet. A month ago, this was all covered. Yeah, because that, that that goes back into what I said earlier, and and I know I, I can't beat it up, but I still think sand will cover up to the height of the seawall, and that would cover up some some of this area and that's what i'm saying is that we could push it back a little more but well, let me let me ask you let me ask you a different question i know you guys don't like that idea but uh i i, th I think looking at your picture i think if we at least went to on on town property and i don't know if it's that much of a difference if we at least went to where it says 123 or something where we went further back. But let me ask you a different question. I was looking at, I realized that 
when they're putting in the revetment, that picture that you showed before, you show the elevation of the of the revetment and you show that it's a one two slope. And I, I, I understand that. But that revetment, you want it to go all the way to the pillar of that structure that's there. And I guess I guess I can understand that. I don't know if it has to go that high, but why would it have to go that high in our area? You mean back here? No, right up, right up in front. Aren't aren't here? we? When you put in the revetment, you're putting the revetment in a in on a one-two slope, aren't you? That was that picture you showed us. Down here. Yeah, we keep going. Keep here. going. Yeah, right there. That's the revetment, and you got a one-two slope on that, and you're trying to make it so you hit to the top of that pillar, which which I understand in front of that structure, but I don't know, do, do we have to be quite this high on our property because we don't have that structure to go to and to try to protect that structure? Well, you want to be continuous across the area. You, you wouldn't want the top of the stone revetment to all of a sudden drop what you got in this area because it wouldn't do you much good. And this, the reason for well, the, the depth of the stone here to here is because this is the most severely eroded area is the town property. I, I, oh, well, I'm just saying it seems like anyway, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. It just seems like we're doing more for, for other people than we're worried about our, our beach. I'm concerned about our beach. I understand the we want to protect Mormon's property, but how much are we? I, I just think we're giving away too much. That's my point. We're actually doing more on the town property than we are on any other property. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't think, okay. I, 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 I've said my piece, I guess you guys know how I feel. There is more work being done on the town owned property than there is at any other property down here. Okay. And, and fine. I don't care if there's more or less. I just, I'm just trying to save as much of the beach and as less revetment as possible. Well, that's all I'm trying to say. I think that you also have to understand, as I've said, this, these areas here, have never been beach. Okay. All right, but up up front, next to the next to that wall right there, that once that wall gets covered with sand, then this does become a beach. This this the beach right. is Clock Twenty Nine has right. always been in front of this steel sheet piling wall. But you've never even seen that sheet piling wall is always covered with sand. No, Joe, I've seen that sheet piling walls three times since I've lived here. Uh, well, I'm just I'm just saying over okay, I don't want to argue with you, Larry. Okay. You you understand how I feel. I think we're it's overkill on our property. The step the steps the steps used to terminate uh well, the last iteration of the steps that went down before they all disappeared terminated right at that sheet piling wall. That's right. And once we put and, and we lost the steps that went over that sheet piling wall. And then Tom, um, for it lasted for at least three years. There was a termination at that at that um, sheet piling wall. Instead of going out and over, it went. It, it turned. I guess you'd call it perpendicular. And when you got to the bottom, you turned ninety degrees to the left to go down. Right. So right. if we put anything over that. Uh, that's going to go. And the other, the other thing I would say is that we need revetment because if we don't have a continuous revetment, we're going to run into the same issues we have at 23 and 22, where you have that area that gets scoured out or just gets extra, extra beating is all I can say. Okay. Uh, and then, and then Peter, my solution is pull the Vortman revetment back instead of pushing the town revetment out. If you look at the other side, which we didn't even talk about yet, but if you look at the Lupiani side, that we've got the Vortman revetment, according to the diagram, going out more lakeward than the Lupiani revetment. 
So that's what I'm saying. I'm not disagreeing with you guys, but we're just going what side? I think the Bortman revetment could come back further. All right, anybody else? And I leave that to the engineers. I mean, if it can come back, bring it back. Uh, John? No, I think you're explaining it quite well. I understand it. Nope, I'm sorry, John, go ahead. Are you done, John? Yeah, I'm done. I don't want to Larry, do we have a letter then from the engineer stating that this is the least uh, destructive solution to the problem? Because if we don't, we should ask them for that. Um, you know, Bob, I, I don't know what the cover letter says to this. I'd have to go through and read it. Um, I guess let's just make sure we, we have all our ducks in a row. I mean, I, we, we have a cover letter that was sent with the drawings. I, to be frank with you, or honest with you, I didn't pay much attention. Yeah. Can you yeah. see the this next? This is Chris. I, I just, I, I agree with Dr. LeMay. I, I think that is one of the crucial <laughs> hurdles that there just needs to be that determination made. I, presumably, but we're not in the presumption business, right? That, that that's why they plan it as they did. But I think that there needs to be a, a formal determination of that. And so, you know, even if you get to the point where you're inclined to approve this, it would need to be, you know, among other things, subject to that determination being clarified. Okay, just okay. One, one more one more comment on, on Bortman. Are we then, I believe what we're saying is that by, by if, if we agree with what you showed us on the Bortman property, then are we also saying then for the Lupiani property, we're going to have to put the revetment at the same distance that we are for the Bortman property. Is that correct? Actually, the Lupiani uh, revetment is further behind the uh, Bortman revetment. I, 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 I know I've seen that, Larry, but I'm just saying, then if you guys go by your theory that you want a straight line, are you saying then that we have to force the Lupiani vet revetment to be lined up with the Bortman revetment? No, there's, I, I didn't, I'm sorry if you took that to mean that there was a theory that it has to be on a straight line. The point was, it's, it's, and let me show you again. You can't do, you can't do little jog. I understand that, Larry. I understand completely that you want to do that, a straight line. I have no problem with that. Right. When I'm talking about a straight line, when I when I said that the distance between the Bortman property and our property, and then Pete said, well, they got to be at the same level. That was what I was saying, a straight line. And then I'm asking you, is that what you're going to do over on the, uh, which we call it side two, the, the Lupiani side? If you, Larry, go up one to that other diagram you have, the first diagram. The up. Yeah, keep going up. Okay, right, right there, you see where you can roughly see it, but right where it says existing pillar type, you see in, in the shadow, the Lupiani revetment. Right. And that's at about, it looks like about 586, if that's what it is, someplace about there. And what I'm saying is that you guys are looking at putting the Vortman revetment higher than that 586, so is it going to be okay that Lupiani is going to be at 586 and Vortman might be at 585 or five or whatever? Well, is that that's back to what you were talking about? In when I said that you'd pull a line from here to here, that that's a, a they will do that. They'll end up setting a mark on probably the Lion Seawall. And they'll go down and set it on the Osborne, actually on the town property at the West End and try to keep that in somewhat of a straight line. But it won't be a straight line as you think of a building line. Uh, the Lupiani, when you look at this and you see where these rock are now, and if you were to go down there today, this rock is exposed now all the way down out to the steel sheet piling wall. Larry, which, Larry, I was down there yesterday. I was standing on that rock. So when, if you were to go down there today, you would see that all this, there, 
this is no longer all buried. So then this rock, same as what I talked about, about the riprap here, this rock in the Lupiani area is shot rock, is the large limestone boulders. So those that are all the way up in front here will be pulled back. Well, let's look at Lupiani's and just talk about that. So he's got mostly large rock and it, was, it has been moved and rolled down the hill. So what will happen there is this rock will be pulled away, proper filter cloth will be put down, and then the stone at different grades, just like you saw in the others, will be set so that it locks together. And then that stone will stop in about the same area as the stone in front of the Vortman property. Then you get to, so this then is the Osborne property. So this section is, you can see the stone here. This is all uh, Lupiani stone. So this stone has to be reset because it's just, it's too loose. And that will be set more in a revetment, you know, a triangular type of uh, affair. And then this area in front of his house, if you go down to his next drawing, he shows the stone actually out in front of where Lupiani's stone is here. But this really should be, you, you know, you don't want to have this return and then their stone here. You'd want to keep this in some fashion of a line through here. Uh, I'm not sure what this, what does it say here? That's the, that's the sand. Oh, he's got those bags. Those bags won't stay. Uh, they, they would be, uh, it wouldn't make sense to leave those bags. Uh, so th there's a, a problem of some existing steel sheet piling walls that were driven, which were part of this midnight permits on December 30th years ago. And those walls, unfortunately, uh, especially this wall, was they cut the tiebacks and broke the whaler off for the seawall that was in fine shape and then drove the steel sheet piling here, which was, it was, it was not a good thing to do. So uh, my suggestion was you should pull this wall and you should reestablish your, your tie backs to your dead men because these two walls with no tie backs, no dead men, really don't, aren't of much value to you. So then this wall, there's a short wall here. I don't remember how many sheets it is. Let's say it's eight feet back. That wall really should be burned off so that this revetment can be continuous across here. And then these bags, that they that there's no sense in leaving those. Then the same thing, this is town owned property and there's a steel sheet piling wall that comes here, and then it comes back to here. Now, right now, the trees all in this area where you see these drawings were my, the trees are starting to fall over because it's eroded back further. So the goal is, is to wrap this stone around and come down and protect the town's property as well. So Larry, your suggestion then is if you go up a little bit is to have um, them repair that old seawall, the, at least the tiebacks and the dead men, and the right. connection to the dead men, take out the seawall that was installed, what, five years ago now? Right. That's all across. That That's, that's the... Uh, it starts, I think, right about here, Bob. 
and then mm-hmm. comes across down this way. So it's it's probably two thirds of the way, maybe. So the, the the part that extends further to the west and curves to the south, that's not there now? No. Oh, okay. So it's really a small portion of wall that would have to be removed. Right. The portion of the wall is probably from about this arrow here back to this corner. But and, and that's the problem. They, they ran the sea, the sheet, sheet piling to here, stopped it, yep. and then they went back about two feet and started the other sheet piling. There's no connection here. It's just a terrible job. It, it's and there's no sense in trying to do something positive in here without correcting this first. And then where the uh, where this diagram shows their revetment abruptly turning to the south and then connecting to Lupiani's, that the thought is is to not have that happen, to have that be a straight connection. Right, those. a smoother connection, right. Yep. And I think, and in fact, I think our connect the seawall, connect the coastal protection structure ordinance says that that has to be a straight connection as much as possible. Okay. And then my question again, if we go on town property, why do we need all this revetment on town property? What are we protecting? This um, section here is just being continually eroded away. Well, the whole, See, everything from there to bus stop 28 is being eroded. Right, it is. Well, and it, and it's being eroded uniformly, but why do we need, why do we need, uh, you're down there, up up at top, way up by the lake. Why do we need that revetment on our property? Well, this is a steep, you can see how close these uh, topo right. lines are. I was there yesterday, Larry, I saw it all. So, but I'm explaining it for people that weren't there yesterday. Okay, okay. sorry. So these lines, when they're close together like that, means that, that it's steep. Um, and as you get away, then the lines become farther apart. Then that's more of a shallow slope down to the water. So the goal here is is to protect this steep area that's eroded quite a bit with stone and then connect it through here. This is steel sheet piling here and the steel sheet piling comes back to here. And uh, this old ragtag stair that would just be pulled out would be yanked. But the goal here is to stop the erosion from marching up the hill here I mean, I guess ideally you'd like to take, you see where it says bluff along here? You know, you'd like to take this stone and put it 12 feet in front of that bluff all the way down. But, you know, that's a, an expensive proposition. And that's what they did in the 70s. They tossed all that riprap down there in front of that bluff to stop that bluff from being eroded. But as and I'll just say it one more time, I just don't see any need for that riffraff up closer to the lake on the town property. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. The whole that whole area from from uh, Osborne's property to 28 is uniformly being eroded, and it's I don't, anyway. I, I don't see it. I don't see it at all. Okay, Bob. Uh, you know, I, I guess I'm struck that that um, you know you've suggested a number of modifications to this plan, um, and I I guess for us to approve this permit, do we need to see those modifications on a site plan? You mean the line across the over on the Osborne side or the uh, Vermont side? Yeah, that and the connection between uh, Osborne and Lupiani, um, a plan to remove that seawall. I mean, we're making some, you've suggested some pretty significant changes that seem to make a lot of sense to me. And I, I guess I'm just wondering if we approve today 
we are, what, what plan are we approving? You know, I mean, you understand where I'm coming from? I just, I just think everything you've said makes a lot of sense. And I want to be sure that's part of the plan that we approve. So I said, we uh, approve it based on uh, the changes that were suggested uh, with the um, a constraint that uh, we get uh, a revised site plan. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we need some some uh, you know some, we need we need to be sure that the changes that you suggested are made. Yeah. Thank you, Larry. Larry, does that does that make sense? Yeah, I'm just I'm writing this stuff down. So, uh, Larry, when you get a chance, can you move your diagram back where we show the property next to Osborne, the town property next to Osborne? Yeah, a little bit more, Larry. Thank you. We never talked about this other thing that says site access road. Is there any discussion about that? What what is that what is that going to do? And how how what are we going to do there? Are we are we changing the slope of the hill? And and then if we are, is that going to cause Osborne's property uh, some difficulty of erosion? The site okay. access road is there were two proposed site access areas. One was this one, the other was stop 29. And um, it, I personally would prefer this one uh, because it's, what would happen here is there was one scrag, scraggly tree up top that would have to come out and then Phil would have to be uh, moved down the hill and then we would have access to all the sites. So I, I thought that this was the, the best site access. At one point in time, and again, that, you know, it changes by the day and week. At one point in time, the water was up so high around this area that this, this side site access wouldn't work. Then we went down and said, okay, well, you could come down stop 29. Uh, and then they would have to rebuild the steps, which Tim Vortman said, look, I'll rebuild the steps, you know, on his nickel. Um, so the site access, regardless of whether it's here or on the other side, the net cost is borne by the private homeowners and the return, of, pardon me, of that property to its current condition. And, and that would all be subject to approval by the town council since it's on town property. That's correct. The building commission it doesn't really have. It's just what 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 has happened in the past. If, if, if there was there is no site access, what what was done? How did they've done work down there? Osborne put in those sheet pilings and everything else. How was that work done without a site access road? They may have used somebody else's site access. Why did why do we need to create a site access? When they when they did that before, there was access along the beach that's no longer existing. Okay. Just another point anyway. And and I, that stop twenty nine, uh, Larry, I defer to you on that, but there's going to have to be some pretty heavy equipment moved down there. I don't know that that's wide enough without scrunching up something else. <laughs> you know, Pete, it's, it, that's another reason and I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up. It's another reason I preferred just in my own mind, the, the, uh, the Western access because the Eastern access is this 
unfortunately it doesn't show that it shows it down south or not down south it shows it on this drawing but it doesn't go all the way up past the house see our see our our property line where I'm, my arrow's wavering you know it, it it shows our property line and you're correct when you go back and you look at This is a pretty tight, narrow area here because I, and I'm not sure, and I don't know if any of you guys were on the council back then, but there was some horse trading of land, which is, so now I think this is only 30 feet wide, but this is either 60 or 80 feet wide down here, which is why the town owns more property down below. And I think it would be and I've talked to the to the to Woodruff and I've talked to his guys. I think it would be less invasive for everyone to do this road here. And there's going to uh, um, they're going to restore it to the same contour that it yes. exists now. Just right. It'll be, be a little bare. We'll have to put some dune grass there. And Pete, just to that point, I, I would envision that if the, if this building commission is inclined to approve it, and then the council are inclined that we we would have some form of temporary easement or license agreement too that would indicate all of those and some protections for the town to make sure that it's in the same or better shape um, with some protections in there for enforcement as well. John. Don't have anything to add to that. Joy. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Pete. I'm fine. Chris. Nothing for me, sir. I'm good. Joe. Just one other question. Uh, if and maybe maybe it'll work, but I just hopefully you're thinking through this. If you have an access road there on that property, we have two seawalls. We have we have a side setback seawall, and we also have a seawall in front. Is that going to impede the movement of equipment and stuff like that? If you're really talking about trying to move all the equipment. Is that going to cause any issues for, for the people? No, the seal sheet piling, Joe, if you can see my arrow here. Yeah, I, yeah. It's here and it's here. Right. No, I understand. I'm just yeah, wondering if, well if that's... The, it's well out of the way of the work. Okay, because like I say, if, as Pete mentioned, if we do get a beach back in front, is there enough room for them to turn if they wanted to go up and down the beach too? Is there enough room to turn around and stuff? You mean the equipment? Yes, to get it out of that. It, to be honest with you, I, I would prefer them to take this area and fill this with stone and put stone right here. There's two large trees that have already fallen here, and there's two larger ones that are about ready to go. And I'd like to see some stone placed in front of those trees so that they don't go because once those trees go then you know you're you're opening we're not you we're opening we are opening ourselves to more erosion down that stop 28 area larry might that be a change we suggest also then so at the top where they have the curving part of their revetment Mm -hmm. Instead of that being curving, make that a straight line diagonal across covering the protecting those trees. Yeah, I, I think so, Bob. I mean, I, I'm I'm all for trying to get more of this public area protected. Mm -hmm. so that, you know, those trees really are what hold the hill. They've been holding the hill when we were kids. We used to tie our boats up to them, you know, and as this as the erosion kept coming, we kept going higher up the hill. And it's the same thing at stop 28. There are 
three or four trees down there that are in front of the stairs and two of them now have fallen. So part of this whole project would be to go down to 28 and rebuild that revetment at 28 to protect the stairs and the trees there. So I guess let's make that that another modification to this plan. Okay. If that's a good, if you think that's the way to go. Okay. Uh, do you want me to leave these drawings up or do you want to see everybody? Uh, if we're going to have public comment, we better be able to see everybody. All right. Well, and I guess if I think I'm good enough at it now where I could probably pull it up if somebody had a question. So I'm going to take them down now. Okay. All right. So uh, if it's okay with you, Larry, we'll have public comment. Um, and again, I want to stress public comments going to be three minutes. Uh, and then, then we'll have to cut you off just because we got places to go and people to meet. Um, so if you want to public make public comment, go ahead and raise your hand. How do I raise your hand? Hey, Dr. Okay. LeMay, Jim, oh, Jim Nylum. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. LeMay, and for the members of the Building Commission there. Your meeting has gone very well and very informative. Uh, I know you have a three minute time limit, but I would hope that if some people have pertinent information to offer that you might consider that in extending the time limit. What I'd like to first start off with is with the town lot west of the Osborne property and the revetment that's gonna be placed on the town property. If I heard the Larry Wall's comment, he said he would like to see a 12 foot revetment going from the toe or from the bluff towards the lake. Is that correct, Larry? I don't know that it's 12 foot, Jim. I'd like to see it protect the trees that are to the outside of the steel sheet piling. Well, in my opinion, I think that revetment, its primary concern is actually protecting the Osborne property. Uh, there may be some secondary protecting of the town property, but the, the actual width of that revetment is actually much larger than any of the, those revetments in front of, actually in front of the Osborne, in front of the Lupiani and the Vortman and Stop 29. Is that correct? Uh, I couldn't say it without measuring them, but they all should be about the same. We want them to be the, 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 the height of the revetment should be the width. That's the ideal, a one-to-one -one slope. But if you look at the drawing, the revetment on the town property is at 593. The revetment at the Vortman property is approximately 589. And you can see how much farther the revetment goes back or towards the roadway than the actual Osborne revetment. I have to bring the drawing up to look. So, so I, I, I guess, Jim, what is the question that the one is, the Osborne is further than the other? Well, it, it, it's, it, it's, there's no question about it. Your drawing actually shows that. The, or the yeah, Edgewater just, drawing shows, shows right that. The, yeah, there, that's the edge of the Osborne right. revetment. Right. And then so the, you, town, the town revetment comes much farther to the north. Keep coming. Almost to where the access road is the end of the access road. Right. 
Right. From, from, the, from the north side, from right here, the revetment comes to the base of the access road. And yes. then, then this curves out. I would rather see this come out and take in this section over here where there are two trees that have fallen off this bluff. That was my statement. But you also made the statement of the 12 feet. So wh what I'm saying that the 12 feet, if, if you went back to the bluff and he extended 12 or whatever amount that you actually would think would protect town property, the existing drawings and the existing plants now show going much more towards the lake than needs to be. Well, this, this, let me see if I can highlight. I don't know if I can highlight on this thing or not. While you're highlighting that, and I know my, the clock is running. Like, well, this isn't going to let me highlight. Hold on. No. Go ahead, Jim. And, uh, um, is there any way that the, the town property could not be used and the, and the Osbournes could actually protect their property on their property? I don't, I'm, I'm not following you. All right, so, so the revetment that comes on the town property, especially towards, towards the lake, that I, I don't believe that, that that far northern part of the of the revetment on town property is needed to protect town property. It's my it's my opinion that I believe that, that the way that that revetment is is made is to protect the Osborne property. And what I am saying is why doesn't the property owner protect their property? on their property? Why do they have to use public property to protect their property? Is, does that seem to... Jim, my, my, my thought, you know, having looked at what, what happens on the beach and read about this whole process of erosion and literal flow, is that if the Osbournes put a, a straight line wall back 18 inches from their property line, that is going to simply cause more and more erosion of that site of that place that's listed as the site access road and the town will ultimately have to put in shore protection structures i mean you put an angle like that those waves that come out of the northwest are just going to get deflected along that tie back right into the bluff and how about uh, putting the the revetment from the town on the town property uh, starting at the back of the revetment of the Osborne property. Well, here, I think this is what you're talking about, and this is what I envision will most likely happen in theory or in construction practice. I couldn't figure out any other way than to do it. Can you see these black dots? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, if this comes across here and comes down, I would rather see this come across here and then come out and go outside of, this is the steel sheet piling, and come outside the steel sheet piling so that the town's property was completely protected all the way up to where this bluff area is with the trees falling off. As far as is the protection of the town property, this, does protect the town property here. And that's back to, you know, when you read the topo lines, you can see here, this is probably a one of 12 right here where this uh, erosion is happening here. And I, I, I appreciate that. I, uh, I, and I do understand that, Larry. I, I have uh, one other point that I would like to, be able to put before the, the commission. And although you probably will not be able to solve it for me this morning, I would like you to, uh, after the meeting or, or later in the meeting, 
go back to the Army Corps of Engineers response to the deleteria uh, uh, ordinary high water mark determination. And I would hope that you would look at picture number four, where it shows the Corps taking a, uh, a data point, which they refer to it at elevation 584 plus some change. More. Keep it. That's the one. And it, I don't know if Larry, if you can enlarge that, but it, no, if I'm you, sure. well, it, 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 then uh, hopefully everybody has better eyes than I do. If you look before the gentleman with the blue shirt and the gentleman that's standing just uh, north of him, you actually can see the tieback wall of the town property. And you can also see the taller seawall that is in front of the Osborne property. And in the Edgewater, in the Edgewater uh, drawings, uh, v, if you look at V uh, 3.00, they actually show that the top of the old seawall at the top of the old seawall is at elevation 584. If you, if you if, if go, go down uh, farther to where it shows the side views of the Go to the drawings underneath this one, Blair, please. Keep going. Keep going. Keep That's going. That's all I got. Uh -huh. Is it on the Osborne drawing? Yeah, Osborne drawing. Okay. Oh, that, that, that'll, that'll show it. Here, see this triangle, that's 584. Yeah, but what I want to show where they actually, uh, they show the dimension of the top of the old seawalls at 584, if you could just scroll down. There you go. The, you see where they show the two, uh, the two uh, right. seawalls? This is the old one, this is the one they bunged up. Yes. And would you agree with me that they're actually showing in this drawing that the top of the older seawall is at 584 and the top of the newer seawall is at 588.7? Yeah. Now, I, I hate to do this to you, but if you could go back to picture number four of the Army Corps report, you can clearly see, especially when you enlarge the picture, that the Army Corps, and, and Larry, I'll ask you to uh, confirm, that the instrument that they have standing vertically where it touches the beach, is that not where the, the 584, is that, is that not where the determination that they're making being done? I mean, at the bottom of the stick. I don't think it says that, Joe. No, I, I don't think that's oh, necessarily. Yeah. Jim, you can't tell. The, I, yeah. that could, what that guy's writing on is a pad. That could be, yeah. the, the, the mark could be anywhere along his pole here. Yeah. Larry, we need to move to other comments. We've, we've gone way over okay. the three minutes. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Bob. Anybody else want to comment? Raise your hand. You know what, if you want to comment, just talk, because I don't see any hands. So anybody else want to comment? All right, Larry, I don't see any other comments. Bob, I'd oh, like okay, to comment. Okay, John Wall, I'm sorry, there he is. 
Oh, okay, Pat. Got it you. looks like you have Pat too. Okay. John, go ahead. Yeah, I, all I would say is the, it seems to me like the new drawings as opposed to the drawings you guys have been looking at for the last three or four months are a favorable adjustment to their prior drawings. We asked that they move the stone back away from the wall and they've done that. I think we've got the ordinary high water mark where the Corps has told us it is. I think we're in reasonable shape in terms of our ordinance relative to the ordinary high water mark. I also think, uh, you know, the banter about the town property being protected. I'm of the opinion that we're, we're getting a freebie here and, and we're going to be able to protect our property, which needs to be protected unless we're going to take the risk of stop 29 going into the lake. I, I understand what Chris talking about. I'm not so sure we can ask the Bortman and Osborne property owners to pay for more revetment going west. But, you know, if you look at stop 28 today and you see what the damage has done recently, you realize that the old riprap that's down there now is protecting it somewhat, but we're still in danger of some more. So I do appreciate Larry's comments relative to protecting some of that if we can. Um, I think people need to realize that the reason we want to do this this way is it'll be a lot quicker for the beach to come back if we protect the erosion now. If we allow natural occurrence to, to continue, we're going to have a lot more uh, erosion and a lot deeper situation when the sand finally does come back. If we do allow this, this revetment to go in the way it's been proposed on the town properties, both the Stop 29 property and the property that Jim Nyland was questioning a minute ago, the more we protect that, the quicker that sand will refill and we'll have a better beach to, to deal with. Those are my comments. Okay, and then Pat. I'm gonna unmute you, Pat, hold on. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Wait a minute. I haven't started the timer yet. Hit your unmute, hit, hit your, uh, Unmute button. Okay, you. there we go. Thank yep. you. Yeah, I'd like to uh, join uh, Jim uh, Jim's comments, um, and uh, I just wanted to say I, I unfortunately have to run to another meeting, but I have been listening to everything. So what I've done is put a set of comments in writing to you because I think they're important to have in the record here. Um, but I would like to emphasize right now that I think you're making a mistake to if you're planning on approving this permit with all of these changes that you've already articulated as needing to be made here. Um, I also think we haven't had the proper notice to the entire um, well, all Pat, residents. Pat, let me interrupt you real quick on that mm -hmm. because you know that 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 notice requirement and you and I discussed this yesterday. Yeah was contingent on it being an emergency approval or emergency permit. But okay. Larry, our building commissioner, is the one who determines what's an emergency, and he does well, let, not feel this is an emergency. Let, let me just say to you then that I think is good practice, um, that, particularly when you're talking about public property, town-owned property, you don't have the town council's approval on yet. You're talking uh, that you really should uh, notif give a broader notice of what this is and a lot of changes are being suggested. You're talking about, you know, what, what the building commission is supposed to do is approve an application that's in front of it, not, not approve something based on all kinds of changes and all kinds of contingent approvals. You know, so you're putting your, your cart before the horse here. And um, I'm not, you know, I, I just think you, you need to go to the town council, the public needs to be involved. How are people going to access Stop 29 in the future? How are people going to get down to the public trust over this permanent change to a public access point? Um, you know, it's a uh, these are the real concerns here uh, about whether or not the these changes should be made on the on, on Osborne and Vortman's own properties and not public properties, and then minimize, as has been discussed here, the changes to the public property and ensure public access to the public trust beach. Um, but I really th just want to, I put these comments in writing to you. I ask that they be put in the record because if we have to appeal, we want all of this in the record. But I would really urge you not to take action, be putting the cart before the horse uh, until you have the diagrams and everything in front of you that shows what's actually going to be done and that every ordinance of the town has been addressed, inc including changes to dune formations and a lot of other things have all been addressed to your satisfaction 
by the applicant. And um, so with that, I, I thank you. I agree with Jim. I think it's been a thoughtful conversation. I don't, we don't, we're not looking to obstruct. We're looking to have this done in an orderly, proper fashion as, and let it go as quickly as possible, although these folks waited an awful long time before they, you know, we've been asking them for over a year to delineate ordinary high watermark. So I would just say, uh, you know, do it in, in due course, do it quickly, but do it procedurally correctly. Thank you. Okay, Larry, I don't see any other comments. So back to you. Okay. Um... Barring no other comments, uh, any other uh, commission discussion? I, I just want to be sure that that, that change that you made during uh, Jim Nylab's comments about that um, western edge of the Osborne revetment extending concavely as opposed to a straight line or convexly is part of the any amendment that we make. Because I do think that's that's an excellent move. Plus, that also cuts down on the amount of revetment that's going to be there. So the way I have it right now is I would make sure that they would put a note on the drawings that say that they're going to pull that sheet piling and fix those dead men. Um, and uh, the the stone or revetment to the west of the Osborne property extend over the steel sheet piling wall onto the beach in front of the trees at uh, the western edge of the town property, which is west of Osborne's. Yeah, with the convex configuration as opposed right. to concave or even a straight line. Right. And uh, then also we talked about... Uh, on the east side of the Osborne property, making sure that um, that revetment connects with less angulation to the uh, Lupiani revetment. Yeah, I can, I can, I'll get a hold of Daryl and uh, run it by him and have him. He'll have to talk to the Vortmans because that's who he's working for sure. in the Osborns. And I would assume that he can make those changes and uh, we should be in good shape, right? And, all, and, all. and the straight line across uh, Os the front of Osborns too, as opposed to all the, the bumps and humps uh, in the um, revetment. Yeah, he, he made that based on our r request that he follow the 584 line in theory in construction practice you couldn't do you couldn't really do that so i'm i'll just have him ease that line and i won't i'll tell him not to follow a contour line or a topo line just to follow a a, 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 a line that would be able to be constructed from Okay, so that that would uh, that would take care of the um, the um, Lupiani Osborne um, Baltimore whatever it is situation. We've got the um, other area that we then have to recommend to the town council that we uh, make those changes and allow that construction to occur on the town property. We can approve. The construction, but we can't approve the actual, the actual, uh, you know, work on the town property. The town council would have to approve that, right? And the access too. And I guess, I guess, my thought would be that uh, the uh, homeowners, property owners, uh, would need to make a request to the town council for access, and then some negotiation can take place between them and the town council as far as how that might be facilitated. And then like Chris says, returning it to its original, whatever. Yes. Um, so okay. is, that, is that in the form of a motion? <laughs> Tighten it up for me and I'll write it. <laughs> okay, I'll make a motion to approve 
the construction of seawall across the private properties uh, with additional um, that we get a revised site plan, which contains all the things Larry has identified. Okay. Uh, any more discussion? Oh, uh, I need a second. I'll second it. Uh, now you got me screwed up, John. I can't write it now. So that was P. Five volts R LMA. Any other discussion? Being none. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign? No. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, Who voted no? No. no. <laughs> you know, when I run when I run these everything, I, I always put an X by the no on Joe. <laughs> it saves me some ink. Uh, so then the town situation, uh, I guess. We just get with Bob, you get with Chris, and then that's going to be worked out, I'm assuming, from the conversations that I've heard with the owners. Well, um, yeah, the be LMAs, the onus is on the permittees to, right. to make their request, and then the yeah, town yeah. council can take it up when they know what they're requesting. But, I mean, yeah, the, I think the, the path is set from here of what they need, but that, that request needs to come from them to the council. Yeah. Okay. I will make sure that I get a hold of, of Daryl today, and I would expect we would have these by Monday or Tuesday, and I'll get them off to everybody, and then I'll follow through. Chris, maybe you and I touch base next week um, and follow through on that. Uh, the, the permittees, as you called them, um, and I also want to make sure that we understand that this is also, we're also going to enhance the stop 28 protection included in the same process. Does everybody understand that? We didn't talk about it much today, but we talked about it more at the last meeting. Uh, yes. Okay. So do we have to I make a motion to approve the step 28 as well? I'll second. Uh, and you're talking about the work to the west of the Osborne property? Or are we talking about actually at stop 28? At stop 28 in front of the stairs. Okay. There's the rip wrap or the, the pavement and the rip wrap. They're going to clean that up and they're going to put some stone along that area. And and so we have a, some of that is on town property as well, is it? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. It's the problem is is it's flat uh, riprap, and it's just migrated out towards the lake. So the water, if you've been down there during a storm, you'll see the water rather than taking the brunt of the wave action, which the revetment is intended to do, it just slides up it. So we'd like to get that back to where. I mean, ideally, it would be nice if we could get somebody to pay for it all along there because that riprap is all along there is in the same situation. The entire stop 28, two of those, three of those properties are private property. The rest are um, public property. I have had some discussion with one of the owners that owns two of the properties and he has he has expressed an interest in cleaning up his revetment, so to say, on his property. Well, the, the work that's in front of us is the stuff by uh, what's uh, Denver. Yes, right, and and that that we we can approve the construction or the, the the plan but the town since some of that occurs on the town property they have to approve the council has to approve it right yes that's correct pete and do we have a site plan for denver's and stop 28 
Um, you know, we do. I think it might be part of the original one, which I didn't see in this last package. I'll have to look that up, Bob. Uh, I know there was a topo map that was done and uh, some of the engineering was done, but I don't think it was part of this. I didn't see it as part of this. Let me put it that way. Well, we have we have a building commission meeting, for, I believe, next Friday right. again. Right. Uh, maybe we should make sure we have all that together and, and go over that in the same detail that we did this. Okay. Does that sound reasonable? Because I, I think it's going to take some time, and hopefully not a lot of time, but some time to uh, finalize the access agreement between the property owners and the town council. And I assume that um, Denver's plan to use the same access. So yes. maybe that, that, that can wait till our next meeting. I, I hate to rush it, especially in view of the criticism we've gotten already for dealing with this issue at this meeting you got criticism well i thought so i don't know maybe not i agree bob joe <laughs> i knew you would agree joe <laughs> okay <laughs> anything else yeah we've only been talking about this for nine months so i guess yeah, what's another week right right <laughs> anything else okay i think we're good all right Motion to adjourn. Pete. I second. Joy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All the same sign. No. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs>